Wow. Wow. Wow, this is this is some really deep stuff. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped, something sick. I wasn't expecting that either. Ah, uh, sorry. It's okay, it's all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Monster is like really small, but it had to become that to stop me. And then her child became present when you mentioned it. And I didn't realize this until now. There were things that I didn't remember yeah. until now. It's funny, I haven't seen that before. It, it feels like I'm the monster. I'm kind of seeing images of things. Of a, of a world where they can exist. This clarity brings all kinds of answers. It's clear. She like hugged me and then went back to her place, I guess, in my heart. Oh, it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants the bippity boppity boop Cinderella me. Like, <laughs> she's like melted into like my chest. It's like ooey gooey. Y'all week been finishing things, cleaning up more. Started eating vegetables again last week. <laughs> and it kind of just started happening. It's almost like I just finished going through a meditation session. I feel like, like, you know, when you. When you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you, wow. I actually feel a lot more um, awake. We would just start by you, um, you know, bringing to the table something that's up for you or a part of yourself you'd like to get to know better or any any event or extreme thing that you just wanted to to talk about and that's where we would start extreme event my yeah. mother died last year um, and it changed my entire life because, yeah uh, because um she was everything to me she was i mean i was like literally here to help her out um the last um two three years going through the last two years um i had gone back to oregon to to you know do something else and she called me back. My sister called me back, said mom had gotten really sick. And I came out in uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. And indeed, she was dying. She was like in a very bad way. She had sold the house. She had made a big disaster. I mean, it was, you know, the whole getting ripped off of the house just broke her. And yeah. um, I kind of helped her pass, cross over. And it took two years. And she was, you know, she had already given up life when I came in 2017, but she didn't die until 2019. Yeah. So it was two years of really intense, you know. I mean, I had to literally like change her diapers and oh. bathe her and stuff like that. Yeah. And she was not mobile anymore. She was just out of it. Yeah. And, um, and her mind was out of it. You know, her mind was... I mean, she had moments of clarity, which were wonderful, but most of the time she was just, you know, not there. Yeah. And it was intense. It was horrible. It was dreadful. And then when she died, uh, you know, my niece and I and, and my nephew, uh, we kind of rested because it had been a very intense uh, death experience that lasted quite a number of years. Uh -huh. So there was this kind of like, ooh, rest. And then there was this huge sadness. Because she was also, you know, one of the most, but the most, I mean, probably the most important person in my life. Yeah. And it just totally altered, changed everything in my life, you know. Um, and I can't even begin to imagine how it affected my niece and my nephew because they were right here with me, helping me out when that all that stuff happened, you know. Yeah. The apartment I rented, the, the house I rented, was for that, was for my mom to be able to cross over. Mm. And they came out to help me and they just stayed and they, they somehow managed to, but my um, my niece somehow managed to finish high school and my nephew is still working on finishing high school. But, it, you know, 
the uh, trauma of that experience is something we're still working through, you know? It's a very intense yeah. traumatic experience for all of us. So where, are, so where are you with it now, would you say, emotionally? You know, when, when my mom was alive, I had very clear what I had to do. I had very very clear directive of where I was going and what I was doing and why I was doing what I was doing. After she died, it was like a reset. Uh And I don't really still, I mean, I know I need to help these kids to, you know, finish college and high school and get their lives together. But beyond that, I don't really know what I'm about anymore. Uh I don't know, you know, what, I mean, I know, for instance, that my work with ayahuasca and and, uh, and other substances is, is important, but it's no longer the most important thing. It's uh, my music, my writing. I mean, I I just do things to do things. I don't really have like an attachment to anything that I'm doing, yeah. um, except these kids. This, at some point, they're going to grow up and they're not going to need me anymore, and then I'm going to be finding myself once again kind of like without anything to do so to speak you know what I'm saying yeah yeah so so there's a part of you that's that's uh, concerned about just not knowing what to do next and and not knowing what you're about well I mean I know I know what I have to do I mean I know that I have to win this uh, case I need I need to give these kids straight and out so they can get their own feet, uh, you know, they, they can be well on their own feet, independent and everything. And um, that'll take a while. But after that, I mean, I, I, I've studied the uh, the Hindu scriptures and, uh, and the Vedas. It says, you know, after, after you've finished uh, your family life, which is what these kids are for me, um, you have to go into the woods and prepare for death. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> So that's uh, that's where I, that's where I'm at right now. So after all this done and said and done, am I just going to go back and start to like you know detach from everything and go into a deep meditation about how to you know cross over to the next world or what is it all about? What what am I really here for? You know, before I knew it was I need to, I needed to be you know. Um, uh, Proactive and 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 dedicated to to you know the financial stability to be able to keep the whole family together. Yeah. But now that my mom's gone uh, and I want these kids to be independent, I'm not motivated to be financially stable anymore. I'm not motivated to do anything really. I'm just you know going through the motions of ordinary life. So it's, it, there's a big change there. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Okay. So there's a part of you that's not that's not motivated by the money and not motivated by this progress on this on any particular project because because it, you don't really know where where it would be going or it doesn't resonate with you as no because the value that I used to place on it is no longer there. Uh-huh. I mean, before you know. Um, when I was growing up in Hollywood, you know, I went from Carolina, the Carolinas to Hollywood to work with my dad, who was a film producer. And my entire life was about making money and movies and, you know, being rich and, and being able to be a, 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 an important person in the, in the film industry as a writer. So I, you know, I, I, uh, I spent all my energy, all my, all my chi on, on trying to, you know, become the best I could be in that realm. Yeah. Then after 9-11, I saw the whole kind of banality of it, yeah. the whole, you know, mafia aspect of it, and I was really disgusted by it. And I went off into the into the wild, and I worked for UPS with no real recourse until my mom said, you know, come out here and help me out. And then I found my sister's family that needed help, and I dedicated myself to that. And I started reading cards and doing other things to just, you know, maintain the family together. And then when my mom died, I realized, well, this is also something that is going to be over someday. You know, these kids are going to have their own lives. And they're now 18 and 20, so it's not like, you know, 
it's not that far from now. It's maybe five, ten years off yeah. before I have to start thinking about something else to do with myself that is not necessarily, you know, being the best uh, um, uh, Hollywood uh, writer in the world, and or or you know any of the any of the old dreams that I had, and and my and my spiritual quest. I mean. Again, with the DMT and with the, uh, with the psychedelics, I've learned to disassociate from my ego so that I don't really know anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, what it is that I, what it is that I am or I need to do. I just go through the motions, you know. Yeah. It's, like, it's like watching a movie. You know, it's like watching a movie in my own life. <laughs> yeah. Without real attachment to it. No. Okay. I haven't been able to get my health together. I mean, I'm still overweight, and you know, I need to, I need to lose around 20, 20, 30 pounds. Um, I'm at two uh, fifteen right now, and I'm uh, five foot nine, so I shouldn't be. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not totally out of control, but I am kind of out of control with my weight. That's something I can definitely change, mm-hmm. and I don't have the interest or the uh, capacity to do it, although I recognize uh, intellectually it is very important, you know, when it comes down to like actually getting up early and then and, and doing, you know, a walk around or maybe a couple of uh, miles or walk, you know, maybe 30, 40 minutes or I don't know, do some exercise or calisthenics, I just don't do it. Yeah. So I know that's the way that I have to, that I have to give myself a shake, you know? Yeah. I still like to eat. You know, <laughs> I still gorge myself on fried chicken and pizza when I can. So it's, just, I, I, it's like I have no control over myself, you know, okay. over those, over that subject. So it's something I definitely need to change. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm gonna li- I'm gonna name what I'm hearing as different parts of you, and see if there's any of these parts that you feel like you would like to get to know better. So I'm hearing that right. in you. There's a part, for example, that wanted to be the best writer and and maybe that part also wanted wants to be the best something and continues having that kind of strong uh, drive. Um, there's a part of you that that's telling you that you know um, that you need to be about something and that and that you know without knowing what you're about or knowing what your kind of mission is or, or whatever, um, that that would be, you know, uh, unpleasant or disturbing. Um, there's a part of you that, that says you can't control your weight or that fails to do that. There's a part of you that says that you have to get in shape. Um, and there's a part of you that says that you don't have any control, that you have, don't have control over that. So those, I'm just hearing like parts, 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 and I'm wondering if you have any of those that you that you would like to focus on and say, let's get to know that part a little better. My health. Okay. Getting healthy. Yeah. That's the biggest challenge I have right now. Okay. So that so the part perhaps that 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 feels out of control with it and doesn't and doesn't want to do the doesn't want to take those steps would that be the would that work, be a, yeah. okay okay so see if you can um the physical work yeah see if you can locate that part in your body is, is it's there my, it's definitely in my waist it's my, it's my stomach it's my tripes it's my guts sure sure and so and i mean the sensation of it when you're feeling when you're feeling out of control or like not taking care of your health, what does that what does that part feel like? Where, where do you feel that? You know, I'm feeling out of control. Well, there's two parts to it. One of it is when I want to eat what I shouldn't eat, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is not really hunger. It's more like a weird kind of, you know, uh, gluttony. And that would be in my taste buds, in my tongue, in my mouth. Yeah. And then the other thing, when I need to go out earlier and do exercise, uh, it's my whole body. The, the whole body doesn't want to do it. It's like, you know, my whole body reacts like, no, we're not going to do this. We're, we're too tired. We're not, well, whatever. 
and it, 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 um, yeah, it's a, uh, actually, you know what? It would be probably in my back and my legs. Yeah. Like my back and my legs is where it starts to like really like get tired and say, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. Okay. Yeah. And it, my legs, you know? yeah, and it tells you to not to to not even try. It tells you to that doesn't want to do it at all, right? Or like doesn't want to do it, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, let's we can get to know that part a little bit uh, if that's right with you. So yeah, go ahead. Okay, so show me how. Yeah. So again, in this in this way of of treating these parts almost like they're individual beings. See if you can kind of turn inwards and and our goal is going to is going to be to talk to this part. So see if you can identify this part of you that doesn't doesn't want to do the the exercise, doesn't want to go for the walk or whatever and see if you can um kind of flesh it out. See if you can um see what it looks like or put picture yourself in the room with it even to to be able to talk to it. Um, hunched over, sitting down. Uh, my back is hunched over on the computer, and uh, I know I need to do some exercise, but I'm just way too focused on the computer. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, and so you're saying that's that's the part you see you see yourself on the computer, not that you're on it right now, right? Right. Okay. Great. 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 Yeah. That's the part we need to talk to that part that's on the computer. So see what you can do to, to deepen your access to that part. So I have a part just like that. I, in fact, I've met my part that also was staring at the computer and in order for me to kind of get its attention, I had to kind of wheel the chair around. So see if you can do something similar where you can talk to that part of you that's hunched over that's in the, on the computer. See if you can get closer to it. Get closer to it would be like maybe standing up instead of sitting down. And again, you don't, you know, this. Down is what I do most. Yeah, and this is all in your in your mind, of course. But it's just see if you can kind of get closer to that to that picture of yourself, and see if you can get its attention, and let it know you like okay, to talk. So I'm looking at myself on my on my chair. Yeah. I have to stand up so I can look at myself on the seat. I'm actually sitting down, so I stand up and then I look at the chair, and it's me sitting on the chair, yeah. on the computer, um, just surfing maybe 4chan or Facebook. Yeah, it's that important. Yeah. So see if you can let that part know that you'd like to talk to it. See if you can just uh, ask for its attention and talk to it a little bit, just in your head, and and see how it reacts. All right, so now I'm standing over the chair and I'm looking at myself in the chair and it's, you know, I'm turning my head over to look at myself standing over myself. Yes. Yeah, okay, all right. How, how, would, you say you, how would you say you feel towards that part? How do you feel towards that person in the chair? I feel pity for him. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's um, <laughs> he's a loser, man. Yeah, he needs to get out there and walk. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's he's uh, 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 you know, kind of, again, he, him being a loser kind of thought. Well, you know, he needs to get healthy, but he doesn't. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like he's, he's working against himself somehow. Right. To do what he needs to do, just, just exercise. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to try to get that information and figure that out. So the part of you that's, that, that, says he's a loser and the part of you that says that has this um any prejudgment about him or any like any negative 
uh, feelings about them. See if you can ask that part to step back for a moment while you, the real you, just you, get to know this, this hunched over person in the chair and see how that reacts. So is the real me the guy that is standing up or is the guy in the chair? Yeah, the guy that's standing up. Let's go back in the chair and see, see how it feels. No, I'm asking you I'm asking you to in. I'm asking you to see if you can ask if there's any part of you that feels kind of some judgment, like some some like finger wagging at this guy in the chair. See if you can ask that part, the judgment part, to step back for a moment. So that you can get to know the guy in the okay. chair. Let's see how okay, it, so I'm going to ask that guy to step, step back, yeah. Yeah, let's see how it reacts to that. Uh, all right, he's relaxing into it. He's, he's letting go. Okay. So does the guy in the go chair... Go back in the chair if you Is the guy in the chair aware of your presence? Does he know that you're there? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Ask him, ask him what he wants you to know and just wait for the answer. Don't try to think of an answer. That I have to be happy doing what I'm doing, that I can't force myself to do anything. Does that make sense to you? It does. It does. But it's also a justification, isn't it? I don't know. Because I want to be healthy too. <laughs> yeah. Can't can't be healthy behind the chair all day long. So he's saying that being in the chair is part of the happiness and and the and the exercise yeah, and stuff yeah, feels like saying, force. You know, it's, it's what makes me happy. Why why should I not do what makes me happy? Right. Yeah. And I'm saying to him, you know what? You're not healthy. You need to get moving more. You need to yeah. Move your body. So just just save that. Just save that. Set that part aside. That's the. We just want to try to get to know this part, and so we can figure out what uh, what other motivations he has and and how else we can help him. So try to just reserve or ask that judgment or or you know any argumentative side to just step back for a moment and see what else we can learn from this person in the chair. All right. All right. So I'm not judging you. I'm just you know yeah. watching what you're doing. So ask him what what is he afraid will happen if if he does if he doesn't get your attention that way if he doesn't keep you in the chair what is he afraid will happen and just wait for the answer he doesn't understand the question okay so he wants to stay in the chair he wants to stay hunched over what is he afraid will happen if if he doesn't get you to do that if he loses that um, that power over you to keep you in the chair. He's not afraid of anything. Okay. I mean, he doesn't see anything. He doesn't see it. He mentioned something about... He just feels tired. He just feels tired. He feels tired. Yeah. Okay. That's fair enough. He mentioned something about um, force and not wanting to be forced to, and not losing that happiness through being forced to exercise or forced. Yeah, he to, doesn't want to be forced to do something he doesn't want to do. He wants to do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. So. And does, and again, that does his tiredness and his not wanting to be forced. Does that all? Does that make sense to you? Is that something that you can? can understand where he's coming from. Yeah. Okay. So Yeah, I, I did a lot of physical therapy when I was a child. We had a lot of operations. Uh-huh. So, and they forced the physical therapy and that kind of like, you know, it's not fun. It was good. It was necessary, but it was not fun. So yeah. I think that's, that's the source of it, yeah. So that sounds... Oh, very unpleasant. So let him. So let him know that you get that, and that, and just that you see if you can just show him some compassion and some um, 
appreciation for wanting to, for looking out for your happiness, even if you, you might not think this is the perfect way to do it, you still see that he's, he's trying to, to keep you away from that, you know, forced, uh, unpleasant feeling. The, the, the judging guy keeps saying, you know, lazy bum, lazy bum. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a big, there's a big judgment there. There's like a big judging guy, you know? Yeah. It's funny. I haven't seen that before. Yeah, so he's, he's definitely... Silence that uh, judger, the judgment guy. He's strong. Let that judging guy know that, you know, you he can come back after the, after you're done getting to know the guy in the chair and that you know, in some other conversation, you might get to know him better. Um, but, but you can only do one at a time, basically, if you want to do it, do this, you know, in this way. So. Hey, it's brilliant. I hadn't noticed that before. Yeah. Yeah. So just competing forces. Absolutely. Probably a lot more than, than the two. Because, too, yeah. Because, yeah, I'm getting that. I'm getting that. Because like you said, you know, this this guy in the chair, he just showed you a picture of yourself as a child being forced to do physical therapy. Yeah, he did. He's protecting that child from having to work too hard and being hurt and what really was hurt. Wow, that hit me hard. Yeah, he is. So, so just see what, just see if you can just show him some some compassion, however that looks for you, and some appreciation for doing that job. Because yeah. that's a that's a hard job. He knows hell. Much too well. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's worked hard. He's, and he's, he's seen a lot. He just wants to know what paid. Uh-huh. All costs. Physical, mental, emotional. Yeah. He just wants to avoid pain. He just doesn't want to be with pain anymore. Yeah. So just let him know that you get that. And, and that you respect that and that being and that looking like you're tired from the outside is is makes sense to you holy shit he avoids pain by seeking pleasure does. sure Whatever, whatever makes him tick, he just follows that. Yeah, makes sense. So, so, try asking him if you could, if you could heal that, if you could, if you could heal that pain. What would he like to do instead? What other type of, what other job would he like? How would he like to use his energy if you could heal all that pain and make sure that that doesn't affect him anymore? He wants to make a lot of money. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. He likes money. Okay. Let's see if you can kind of just show him that or let him show you that and just kind of, and just kind of, Imagine that world together where where you are taking where you are handling the pain and he gets to do his pursuit. He 
He's asking me if, that, if we're not one of the same. Sure. You're, you're a system of parts. Yeah. And, and he might even have his own parts. And he interacts with their other parts. He knows that, he knows that judgy bully part. He hears them all the time. He knows that hurt child part. He's working hard to, to keep that quiet. He, and, the, and a bunch of other parts that are involved in the system. He's asking who is the one listening? Who is who am I? Oh yeah, that's the self. That's the that's the capital S self. The super self. Yeah, you're the you're the one that's not a part. You're the captain. You just gave me a DMT flashback. <laughs> that was weird. There is no self. Everything is self. Mm. Did I rise? <laughs> Hey, try asking this part how old he thinks you are and just wait for the answer. Millions of years. Okay. In this earth. Millions and millions of years in this earth. Many bodies, many minds. Okay. Ask the uh, man in the chair part what he needs from you in the future. To learn B. They said nothing. First he said nothing and then he said to him B. Yeah. Does he have any requests around um, your relationship with that other part that calls him lazy? Let him be. Yeah. So <laughs> that might be... That's weird. You might be able to tell him that you could work with that other part and, you know, I don't know if you can make any promises, but you could say, okay, I'll talk to... You know, I'll try to talk to the other, other part about letting you be. So the other part is like this soldier type. Yeah. And he's afraid of dying. Yeah. He's afraid of death. He's afraid of sickness. He's afraid. Mm -hmm. He's afraid of not being. Fear. Yeah. The other part is fear. You know? The other part is fear. I mean, he, he's, he's at least motivated by it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the guy in the chair is not motivated by fear, he's motivated by pleasure. Mm -hmm. He wants to be a, he wants to be happy. He wants to be, you know, enjoying himself. Honey. Trippy, man. <laughs> trippy, trippy, trippy. You know when you get really high on weed and you start like, not levitate, but just getting high? That's competing and I'm not even smoking. The frack. Yeah. 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 So. Trippy, man. Trippy. Yeah, so. You just like, trip me out. <laughs> Um, you know, I don't have any more questions for that particular part. You know, that's kind of the process of getting to know one part. And I would ask you to just say thanks to all of those parts of yours that 
that were willing to talk with you say thanks to the to even the judgy part or the or the soldier part for giving you some space and there are layers to this you know if you were to continue conversations like this you would you could get to know those other parts and you might even get to know um that that hurt child part or any other part of yourself from the past that might um have got left behind, you know? Well, see, it's funny, the, the, the soldier part said, I'm life, I'm life, I'm, 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 I'm your life. And then the hurt child, became present when you mentioned him. And the guy in the chair, he's just sitting down, he's just, you know, chilling out. He's not really worried about it. Uh-huh. Weird. Yeah, they're all real and you can talk to all of them. I mean, you can, you can check in with all of them. You can check in with the, now that you kind of have that pathway, you can say hi to them tomorrow. You can see what they're doing, see what they need. Um, you know what, you just, I had a friend named Uli Lamo, he's this uh, German guy, uh, who said, look, if you have multiple personalities, think of them as a, as a football team, like a soccer team. Yeah. Football is soccer for them. And uh, and there has to be like a goalkeeper. Uh. There has to be somebody that is the goalkeeper that keeps them all, you know, organized to, or a to coach. stay on track and... A coach, a goal, yeah. When in soccer, there's like, I mean, when you play soccer, there's, there's like one guy that is keeping the the goal, the goalie, yeah. you know? And this guy is like the most important guy because he's the one that is going to prevent anybody from from uh, having a goal on you, you know, yeah. from scoring a goal against you. So, yeah. But I guess it is a coach in a sense, yeah? Yeah. The goalie is just another part, yeah. But that's just what I mean. That's what came to me when, I, when we did this. When, when you, when you yeah, I, I think about it the, the same way. I've, I've thought of that analogy myself, where I, I picture a soccer team, and you know, they might not they might not all be running in the same direction all at the same time, but they are they are kind of ideally serving the same purpose. They are on the same team, even if sometimes they bump into each other and sometimes they curse each other out. You know. Somebody's always trying to say to glory and like, you know, be the offensive guy that is like, you know, make a goal on the enemy team. Yeah. Yeah. But the really important guy is the one that is, you know, keeping the enemy team from scoring on I guess. It takes I don't know. takes all of them. Yeah. They're all they're all welcome. They're all needed. They're all important. Yeah. Yeah, they don't they don't show it's they it's just like it's like body parts, really. I mean you wouldn't say, oh, my pinky toe is stupid. I, you know, who needs it? It's kind of like, well, it's there for a reason, you know? <laughs> it's there for a reason, exactly. <laughs> That's brilliant, man. That's fantastic. Where did you learn this? <laughs> um, so the, the guy who created this is named Dick Schwartz. And um, it's a pretty new... You know, it's all, he, he's been doing it for like 30 years, but um, really just in the past 10 years or so has it kind of um, been a little more mainstream. And like I said, it is being used in the psychedelic um, therapies. And with trauma, it, it's, it works. I mean, really, it works for everybody. I, I've talked to so many different people, and myself included, where everybody can do this and... Um, yeah, it's it's incredible, I think. Because I really got high. I mean, it's no joke. I, you know, I don't know how it happened, but I, well, I guess it's just, you know, synapse in the brain. I don't know what... But there was a moment when I really got like, you know, when you when you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you, pow, you hit it, you hit it. <laughs> uh-huh. I, I just had that feeling a second ago, man. And I'm coming down now. But, whoa. <laughs> What's that all about? 
Nice. And I got very emotional there with the uh, guy in the chair. You know, I yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a there's a lot there's a lot to do. There's a lot to unpack, and there's a lot of parts to meet and figure out why they're doing what they're doing. And some of them have been doing the same old job for thirty years, and you know, this is your way of of asking them if they want to do a different job and kind of reorganizing the team a little bit. Well, so is this, this is not psychotherapy. Psychotherapy is more about finding the inner child. But we did find the inner child somewhere. It was the hurt child. Yeah. I was a happy child too. The, that's so so first we would talk to these kind of protective parts they're called protectors so this guy who wants you to to work real hard he's trying to protect you from something and the guy that wants you to take a break he's trying to protect you from something and usually what they're trying to protect you from is a pain is a fear and often that comes from a from something in childhood and that's kind of the next layer where we would we you know in IFS you can talk to the you can talk to those parts too. And that's, they're off, there usually are tears involved because yeah, when you, when you are able to sit down and talk with your, this six year old that's inside of you and has been kind of locked up for so long, uh, it's pretty powerful. Oh, that's interesting. Sorry. You have a cockroach infestation in my house right now? Uh huh. <laughs> I'm looking at this cockroach that just came out uh, near the, uh, the wall socket. And um, it's trying to go into the socket for some reason. Crazy cockroach. And I suddenly got very concerned about the cockroach going into the socket. Because you were saying the six-year-old, that's something my six-year-old would have thought of. <laughs> he, he's compassionate. Yeah. Yeah. He's a nice guy, yeah. Of course. Doesn't want the cockroach to get executed. Right, right. Yeah, you could get to know that six-year-old. <laughs> but first you would want to check yeah. in. First you'd want to, you know, talk to all these different protectors because there's a reason why... There's a reason why we don't talk to those hurt children very much. You know, there's a reason that we're not so openly compassionate and, and caring about cockroaches, for example, because a lot of humiliation and pain can be brought on because of that. Sure. I feel light. I feel light even. Like, whoosh, you know. That's good. That sounds like a good I thing. I don't know. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped. Something clicked. I hear that a lot. People feeling feeling lighter because often there's a tension. There's a that, that part of you was hunched over, you know, and it's kind of a lot of times just being recognized and, and appreciated. It kind of loosens some things up. Well, if, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I don't have any more for you. And if it if it feels complete, we can call it a day. Maybe we can talk, talk again sometime. Yeah, yeah, I feel, I feel, you know, something happened, something happened. I still have to digest it because I'm, I'm a very, like, uh, uh, kind of like a heady guy, you know, I like to like analyze things after they happen yeah. over and over. Uh, but something, something snapped. It was like a click. You know? Well, good news, we got it all on, right now. We got it all on record, so I'll send it to you. I'll send it to we you. We got it all on tape, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen back. And there was definitely this feeling of, of being high, you know? Yeah. Which I love being high. It's something I try to do every day. You know? Sure, sure. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that works. Okay, well, it's been really nice meeting you. And uh, thank you for your time. I'll be in touch. Thank you.
Well, James, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, man. It was fantastic. That was awesome. <laughs> Have a great day, man. Wonderful day. Take care. You too, man. Bye. Do you want to help bring more self-energy to the world? If you'd like to participate in calls or help out with this project in any way, I'd love to hear your ideas. Join the Discord server or contact me at james at liveifs.com. A huge thanks to our audio engineer, Zikri, for your care and diligence in editing the calls. To every caller for your courage in sharing some of your parts. And to anyone out there getting to know their internal system, keep going. Who knows, that might be the most selfless, helpful thing you can do for others, and you're the only one who can do it. If you'd like to see us reach the largest audience, we must please the almighty suggestion algorithms at iTunes and YouTube, and they don't care about the power of IFS. They're looking for likes and shares and comments, and the sooner the better. Follow the links in the show notes right here in your podcast player to make your wishes known. And now, a minute of meditation. Or if you prefer, pull over. You can do it in 60 seconds. Just click one of those links. They're right there. And give us a like or a five-star rating. It would really help. If you think this project is helping people, you're helping people by sharing it. Thank you.